crept into the sky It filled the morning air with warmth and life Sounds of birds in harmony And you there right next to me Hi, we're Marcel and Vendy. It's been over a year since we built this van now, so we thought it is well overdue for our van tour. This is our third van. We built three different vans on three different continents, and we're super proud to take you on the tour on this one because it's our most luxurious van with the most detailed build. So this van is in Australia. We built it around the Australian conditions and climate. It has a lot of unique features that we cannot wait to show you. So let's get started. So this is a 2014 Ford Transit 350L high roof long wheelbase and we bought it just before the pandemic shot van prices absolutely through the roof. So we got it for $26,000, it had 149,000 kilometers on the clock, it now has 175,000 and we've had absolutely no issues with it. It is a six speed manual, fully loaded and kitted out on the highway. We get about 12 liters per 100 kilometers, which isn't too bad for a van that is three and a half tons. So we haven't really done much to change up the interior cab here. We kept the double passenger seat, which was a nightmare in itself. If you know what I'm talking about, you probably have seen the video. <laughs> Uh, we have a problem. Because these vans are actually designed as like a courier van, so there's storage in this middle seat, there's an extra cup holder, and there's also heaps of storage up here. So we've got like books, our sunnies go up here, this is a, a road atlas. All right, let's go into the back. So this is the entryway to the van. We've cut the footwall in half. The footwall used to go all the way from here to here, and we've made a little space saving drawer that goes where the footwall would have been. We got access to this little side storage here, which we hold mostly our shoes and all bits and pieces. A cool little feature is this LED light bar strip that I glued underneath here. And this is actually wired into the van interior lights. So when you open any of the doors, these lights would automatically come on. And all I did was run a wire when I originally got the van all the way down the wall from where the interior lights were down to here. So this is our bulkhead. It's basically dividing the front, the cabin, from the back side and it's preventing the heat coming to the back of the cabin because the cabin is much warmer than the back. We have our small mirror that Marcel built also with our tiny plants and our tiny garden. It's winter now in Australia, so our vessel is not doing so great. We have a fruit basket and also entrance to the cabin. We left this opening on purpose because of convenience. When it's cold, windy, or just in general bad weather, it's so nice. We don't have to get out of the van and get to the cabin. We can easily just walk through. For privacy, I made this uh, macrame, which we can remove. And also for convenience, Marcel removed the armrest. So we can actually easier get to the cabin. Now I will show you our overhead cabinet. It looks like tiny space, but it actually holds a lot of stuff. Our clean towels, spare food, hot water bottles, books and documents, tissues, microphone, candles, anti mozzy stuff, camera, chargers and electronics. Towels, onions, diffuser. Santa hat. <laughs> As you can see, it's insulated, but we didn't bother to cover it up because you barely see it. When building a van, every gram matters. So these cups are actually not a terracotta cups or pot plants. They're actually plastic. And when you mix a baking soda with regal paint, you get this very cool chemical reaction and it actually creates a texture like it would be ceramic or terracotta. So the other thing that's on this bulkhead is our diesel heater port. So this is where the hot air comes out. The diesel heater is situated under the passenger seat and draws air in from underneath the van and also exhausts from outside the van. It's one of those cheap Chinese ones off eBay. I think it was about $170, but it has worked so well. We haven't had a single problem with it. This is our second winter with it now, and it turns on every single time. 
the pump and all the bits are underneath the van so it is super quiet inside and it is just really great to have. So the reason we bought this van is so I can stand up in it. I'm six foot three and as you can see I can still stand up with a little bit of headroom and we have put quite a big floor and insulation in the roof. And the most important thing is standing up when you can cook because you don't want to be bent over. It sucks, your back will ache. This is what we really wanted in this van. So our kitchen, we are so happy with it. We've got these ceramic tiles that we put in. We got a lot of people asking why we're putting real ceramic tiles in the van. They're gonna crack. Well, it's been a year and they are still in absolute perfect condition. The grout, the tiles, everything is immaculate and they just look so good. They work really well as our heat shield and splash back for our stove. The kitchen was completely custom built by myself. The whole frame was built by stripping down two by four timbers, converting them into one by twos and making a frame array, basically so we could house the oven and the fridge. That's what we really wanted. So I built the whole unit around that. The massive game changer to this kitchen that we've never had is a stove and oven combo. It has been so good. This is a three burner stove and it's also got an oven and a grill and it is such a game changer. We can cook pizzas, roasts, baked cakes, all sorts of awesome stuff. This has run off our gas propane, which sits in the back in a storage box. This sink cover here is a double purpose. It works as also our chopping board. So on the underside, we routed a groove so the juices or whatever you're cutting doesn't fall off. The sink is a awesome size sink for this. So it's deep enough for our pots and pans, our cutlery and our plates, but it doesn't take up too much space. I've run the sink in an east-west orientation to get the most out of it. It wasn't originally designed as a under bench sink, but I drilled some holes in the stainless steel, which is actually a lot harder than it sounds, and screwed it up underneath the bench top so we could use this as a bench top extender essentially. So we've got running hot and cold water that comes out of our instant hot water heater which is also on the gas propane line. The water is pumped from a 12 volt diaphragm sea flow pump which is behind the fridge and it is super quiet. You can barely hear it, especially when you're in the van, but you can definitely can't hear it when you're outside the van, which is really great for stealth camping. So when you're cooking anywhere in a van, you need really good ventilation. We designed cross ventilation in this van and also an extraction fan. So we can open up our window next to our stove and we will suck the air in and out and exhaust any fumes when we're cooking. So our fridge is a 65 litre compressor fridge from Bushman's. This thing is ultra quiet, it is super efficient. So compressors generally do get a little bit hot, especially during summer. So we did ventilate it through the back. I installed a vent and a fan, which automatically turns on when this compressor turns on. This is our big mama drawer. So it's got all our pots and pans, Nutribullet, kettle, mixing bowls, pot lids. The pot lids are kept on the back of the drawer with these little clips that I made. It works really well. The top drawer here is where we keep all our cutlery, utensils, and our coffee machine. Way Caco Nano Pressos. These things are so awesome. They make the best coffees. We make like two a day each. They are quite long drawers. I put them on soft closed drawer sliders and that makes a massive difference when you're trying to keep the drawer closed. If you don't want to use those RV specific holds and you want to go a bit of an alternative route like we have done, don't purely use those shitty magnetic holds. These things will open up when you're going around corners. You'll have your drawer open up. All your ball bearings from your sliders will go everywhere. Trust me, learn from my experience. This drawer down here is all our cups, plates, and bowls. It's quite a lot of storage. We hold about six or seven plates in here. To really utilize the space here, I built another drawer underneath the sink, and it is a really low profile drawer, which just holds our cleaning supplies like our dishwashing liquid and scrubber. It goes right underneath the sink. We really love this bin. It slides out. We've got a recycling and a rubbish bin. These just pull out these little wooden boxes I made. So this was a little custom spice rack I built. It's really awesome. It was just made out of actual hardwood spotted gum from my neighbor's deck that he was ripping up. And it holds all our spices perfectly. You really have to keep it full though. Otherwise when you go around corners, all the jars will start flying around. So to make extra use out of this bench top, we really wanted to have this little bench top extender so we can maximize the space of our kitchen. This just sits on folding brackets that clips up like this. 
extends the bench top. If we want it down, it's two little buttons that comes out. Another addition to this kitchen is these LED down lights that I install underneath the overhead cabinets. These things just work off a little switch and light up the kitchen really well. We probably use these lights more than we actually do the down lights in the roof because it really shows off the kitchen much, much better. Welcome to our lounge room setup. This is our pull out table. It's on 50 kilos draw sliders. This is where we work and have our meals. We have two bench seats. One of them is short just for single person to sit on. This one is our longer seat, which also works as a lounge. We have two departments of storage underneath each of the seats. The first one is where we keep our dirty laundry shoes department on the right side. And this is where we keep our toilet. It's a 20 liter chemical toilet and it sits in the small stand. It lifts actually the toilet up so we don't hit our knees in the bench. And it also acts as an emergency storage in the case that the toilet would leak. We also have other cleaning products, a brush. This door allows us to access the back part of the carriage. If we don't want to put our long surfboards on the roof, we can just easily run it through here. We built two of these little cabinets, recessed them into the cavity of the van and they basically just hold anything. This particular one we've just got our toothbrush and cosmetics. They both also have USB ports and an AUX plug for charging anything we want. So this is the other cupboard on the other wall. It's got most of our switches and electronic controllers. It's got all our switches for our fridge, water pump, diesel heater, water heater. This is our water heater controller. So this is where we set the temperature for our hot water. So at the moment it's set to 38 degrees. This is our fresh and gray water monitor. This is our remote control for our inverter. So we don't want to leave our inverter on 24 seven. And then we just use this as a bit of a electronic storage cupboard. And this is our battery monitor. It's tells you how full your battery is in percentage. This is a 135 amp hour battery, so it's got 132 in there. This is how long it's gonna take for either completing your charge or depleting your battery. So we've got an hour and 32 minutes until we're fully charged based off the solar right now. The solar's only got 19 watts coming through because it is quite a cloudy day. Under this seat is where we keep pretty much all the electronics. It's got the battery fuses and everything. And the best way to access that is by taking off the cushions and then removing the top of the seat, which I designed in case we need to remove the battery at any one point. And then we got full access to the battery, the DC to DC charger, and all the other components in this box. This is a fully off-grid system. We don't have any connection to shore power. We've got a 135 amp hour deep cycle lithium battery that runs a 2000 watt inverter that sits in the back. Renergy DC to DC charger. These things are awesome. They basically cut out a whole component. It is an MPPT charge controller that brings our solar in, converts it to 12 volt, pumps it back into the battery, but it also connects to our alternator. It also prefers the solar power. So if we are driving on a really hot day, it'll take as much out of the solar as possible first before trying to draw power from the alternator which in turn saves you money on gas. The fuses are all sit under here a 12 blade fuse box with LED lights in case any of the fuses go out. The whole system can be separately isolated for any kind of maintenance so we've got our starter isolator that disconnects the DC to DC charger from the alternator our solar isolator and our whole battery isolator. So that will turn the entire system off. But if we do need to do any maintenance down the track and I wanna pull things apart, I'll isolate everything first. Overhead cabinets. We have four compartments. Two of them belongs to the kitchen and two of them belongs to our clothes storage. They all have push locks and guest straps. So they stay open. All cabinets have LED strip lighting, which is connected to the micro switch. It automatically switches on and off when we open and close the cabinet. So this is our kitchen overhead cabinet. We store all our condiments here dry food, mostly for breakfast. We also install bungee cords just to make sure that everything stays nice and neat when we drive around. In the second cabinet, we have IKEA boxes. The bottom ones are basically food. The top ones are toiletries, spare seasoning and cosmetics. Welcome to our walk-in wardrobe. This is a Marcel side and this is my side. Yes, that's right. This is 
all clothes we have in the van. This kind of section for our everyday wear. In the garage underneath me, we have one extra box where we store our winter jackets and just very big volume clothes. So the name of our van is Cedar and now you'll understand why we call him like that. This is one of our most favorite features and it's our cedar ceiling. We spent a little bit of extra money and we treated ourselves and the result is really amazing. Another favorite feature is definitely our hardwood floor. It's a spotted gum from Australia and it's 10 millimeters thick. We installed it only at a place where you can see it to save the weight. It's hard wearing and it looks amazing. So this is our fixed east-west bed and we really wanted a fixed bed in this van. Our last two vans have been a converted bed which we really got over having to make our bed every day and we really wanted somewhere where we could just lie down any time of the day whenever we wanted without having to rearrange a whole bunch of stuff. So a lot of people look at me, I'm six foot three and go, how do you fit in a widthways bed? And it is entirely possible with this van. From one wall to the other is actually 193 centimeters, which is nearly six foot four. So it is perfect for me. Because the van isn't parallel, it is slightly tapered. So this side of the bed is actually a lot wider than the other side of the bed. So I sleep on this side and Vendy sleeps on the other side. It works out perfect. You don't really have a lot of room in between your head and the wall, but I don't sleep like a stick. I kind of bend over, curl around. So to make this bed as long as possible, I really used every single inch. And that includes the sliding window. I got a really, really slimline sliding window and I didn't want to put a extra curtain or anything there where your feet would touch. So I got block out blind fabric and glued magnets onto the back, recessed some magnets into the wall here. And now this just snaps on really nice and slimline. The ventilation in a van is so important. I can't stress that enough. After living in a van for a couple of years, you realize how important it actually is. So we installed an additional three windows into this van. We've got two pop-out windows on either side of the van here. And then in the back, we've got a sliding window. These pop-out windows are so awesome. They actually are double glazed windows. They pop out on three different settings. They've got built-in fly screens and blackout blinds. It's an all-in-one unit, it's so awesome. And the best thing about it, if it does rain, we can open it up slightly and the rain doesn't come in. You can't do that with a sliding window, otherwise you'll end up with rain in the van. So these are all just boxed in really nice and neatly with frames and a little window seal covers all up really nicely. So the windows are on both on either side of the van. We get this really nice cross ventilation that comes through on really hot days. But the fan for this van is also really important. It was a cheaper version. I think it is a Max Air replica, but it has been working amazing for us for this last year. We've had no problems with it. It's got three out settings and two in settings. It husses air like no tomorrow. So when we're cooking, we'll open this pop out window, which really just draws all the fumes and gases out, out through the exhaust. Can't highly recommend it enough. So one thing we wouldn't have been able to live without is this Caframo Sirocco 2 fan. It is the elite version, so it is a brushless motor. That's running and you can barely hear it. It is so quiet. So we sleep with this all the time in summer. I don't think we would have been able to survive a summer without it to get that fresh airflow on the face. When we want to sleep at night during summer though, we open up this window and then we turn the exhaust fan on one and it draws the cool air in and out through the van and it really just makes such a massive difference, especially when combined with the Sirocco fan. It just can't be matched, especially if you're not going to be installing, say, like an AC unit. And we definitely didn't want to install that because we just wouldn't have the power to run it. We'd want it to stay off grid. We didn't want to have shore power. So if you want to do that, you really need a really good fan ventilation system. And this just works so, so well. This is our back garage. We have two massive pull-out drawers that's sitting on 225 kilograms draw sliders. There are three main compartments. They are divided by these dividers. If we feel like we want to store something longer, we can easily just take them out and store whatever we need to. In these departments, it's Marcel's tools and fishing stuff. This is our spare shoes, mostly hiking shoes, blankets, and other bits and bobs. 
In the middle is a long storage where we keep our yoga mats, camping chairs, and of course fishing rods. This is where we keep our bulky items like our backpacks, suitcases, a tackle box and also we have two extra boxes where we keep our seasonal clothes. So this is where I keep my long fishing rods. They go all the way through the garage to the long lounge. We also got a LED light strip under here which is connected to the van interior light so they automatically come on when you open the rear doors which is really great. Didn't have to install any little micro switches or anything. This is our outdoor hot water shower. It is connected to our instant hot water so it's pretty awesome it pulls out the whole hose is just stored in this little neat little box the box also has a 12 volt usb and cigarette socket outlet in case we need to use power at the rear of the van the shower connects to this little shower holder or we can have outdoor naked showers or we can close both the drawers and put a shower screen across with magnets This was originally intended for an outdoor shower deck so we didn't have to get our feet dirty. We could stand on here and have a shower. We never really utilized it as a shower deck because I didn't want to have water dripping back down into the van. I thought of a couple of solutions of putting rubber gaskets along here so the water wouldn't go down but it just seemed a little bit too hard and risky for the reward. So what we do predominantly now use this for is for a deck and it has been actually pretty awesome. If we want to rock up to a place and not have to set up a table and chairs, we can just pull this out. This is on 225 kilo heavy duty draw runners. With the weight of the deck, it can probably hold around about 170 kilos. So that's me and Vangela's weight. We can both sit on here very comfortably, have a picnic. The other alternative, if we're around friends, we can actually bring chairs around here and we can all use this as a table. One of my favorite features actually is this little window blind that I've designed here. I box in the window with this really nice hardwood frame. And then the roller blind was just a cheap generic one that I've adjusted to size. It rolls down, is completely black out. It's super neat and tidy. We upgraded the stock rims and commercial tires to light truck 255 70R16 BF Goodridge all-terrain tires. These black rhino rims make the van look absolutely badass and the larger tires give an extra inch of lift to the van. To accommodate for the extra weight of the conversion we installed rear super springs and sumo springs as well as front coil sumo springs. This dramatically increased our ride quality back to post conversion state and also lifted the rear end two inches from the sag of the conversion. So to get up onto our rooftop storage and where the solar panels are I built this aluminium side ladder this was a complete diy job it's actually all aluminium soldered together and reinforced with plate and aluminium pop rivets and it is really really sturdy and up here is our rooftop deck so the whole deck itself is aluminium framed completely pop rivets together i made a really good video on that if you're looking for it i'll leave the link here the deck is tree to pine and it's big enough to hold a fair few people up here we usually just use it for our longboard storage and we still actually have a lot of deck space at the front. So here is our solar setup. We've got 500 watts of solar. We've got 100 watt and two 200 watt panels. So this solar system is more than capable enough of keeping our batteries topped up. It is tailored to our electrical system. So the reason why we went for a skinny panel and two fatter panels is so we could get our rooftop vent in the middle of the van and then so we could still run our long surfboards down here. This is our 52 inch LED light bar. It's connected to our high beams and it turns everything into daylight. So I really hope you liked this van tour. If you did get anything out of it, remember to hit that like button below. Comment what features you do or don't like about our van. We'd love to hear about it. And don't forget to subscribe so you can see our crazy adventures coming up.